Hey guys, welcome back to another Base Hospitality Group training video. Thanks very much for joining me and I hope you enjoy today's session. We'll be looking today at the ideal front desk associate in a Base Hospitality Group hotel. As you can imagine, our front desk associates are some of the most important on our team. Everyone has an integral role, but the role the front desk associate fills is uh, one that's highly visible, which carries a great responsibility. It, they are also the first impression often for our guests, which makes them very important and how they act and behave and function very important. And they're also the motherboard, so to speak, of communication for the property. And so that also means uh, a great deal of uh, responsibility and importance rests with our front desk associates. So we'll do a fair number of these trainings. Today we're going to talk about the main functions of a great front desk associate. And we're also going to dive into the weeds on a couple of topics, mostly check-in and phone calls today to give you a bit of an idea of what we expect and want to see. And so we'll continue to give you training opportunities. We'll do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff with our front desk folks. And hopefully today is a great training that gets you started down the path to being a successful base hospitality group front desk associate. We're gonna start out with the four key functions of a great front desk associate. The first, is that they are able to provide incredible service. This is actually in the job description, to be able to provide incredible service. I, and I'm not saying that like, hey, be nice and fake and smiley. I mean genuinely interested in people in helping meet the needs of the guest who honors us by staying in our properties. Second, to be a problem solver, a thinker, somebody with whom the buck stops. A guest comes to you and they have an issue in their room or a problem that's come up, you are able to figure out a solution, you're able to execute the solution, and you're able to satisfy the need of that guest because you thought about it, you figured it out, you came up with a solution. You didn't pass the buck. Third, reputational protectors. This is an important one. And when we get to it, we're gonna dive a little bit more into the depths of what does it mean to protect our reputation and what kind of reputation are you protecting? It's not just trying to make us look good. We're not worried about that. It's protecting the reputation of what is true and right and good. And we'll get into that when we get to that section. And lastly, we're gonna talk about your role at the front desk as being the motherboard of communication, the hub of communication. Uh, you guys are the ones where most of the information comes in and from you it goes out. And it's really, really important that you are a great, great team player and that you're able to work well with others and think of others before you think of just yourself and what you need. So first, we're gonna get under the heading of guests and we're gonna talk about the first three primary functions, amazing service, problem solving, and protecting the reputation. So as we go through this part, I'm gonna give you some actual scenarios that have happened or could happen. Uh, I'll try to use ones that have actually happened to me or others that I've worked with over the last many years so that you know these are real things that we expect to have happen. So first, we're gonna talk about amazing, incredible service, whatever title you wanna put on it. Service, service that goes beyond the expectation of the guest for the segment of the hotel that we're in. In other words, it doesn't matter if you're an upscale or an economy hotel, we're gonna provide five-star service that no one expects to get in this kind of property. We're gonna think of others and we're gonna think of what our guests need before they ask for it. So amazing service, we're gonna start with the phone. This is really important. Often, a guest 
gets an impression of our property before they've ever set foot on it because of an experience they've had on the phone. So we're going to talk a little bit about receiving phone calls as they come in. Usually we have some sort of auto attendant that's screening calls and directing calls before they ever hit the desk. However, whether or not we do, it doesn't matter. When that phone rings, for that moment, everything else in the world stops. And our focus needs to be on the person on the other end of that line. So that guest doesn't know that you've already answered 53 phone calls today. They don't know. And frankly, they don't care. To them, they want to be the most important person in the world when the person on the end, other end of that line at the hotel picks up the phone. And that's how we need to treat them. So when the phone rings, Hotel Ojibwe, this is Charlie. How can I help you? It sounds cheesy. And it might be, but we're gonna do it anyway. I don't care how bad a day you're having. I do, and we'll talk about that separately. But when you answer the phone, I don't care if you're having the worst day, you need to put a smile on your face. You, you've got to be excited about answering the phone and you got to treat that guest as though they're the most important person in your world at that moment, because they are. They're going to come and they're going to stay with us and they're going to make sure we're all employed and they're going to make sure we have a reason for doing what we're doing. And if we don't treat them with that kind of respect, we're going to lose them. And we don't want to do that. That's not the kind of people we are. That's not the kind of company we're going to run. So when that phone rings, if you're in the middle of something or a guest is standing in front of you, say, because that guest in that moment is as important as the one who's calling on the phone. Could you excuse me for one quick moment and go to pick up the phone? Now, if there's someone else in the office with you and you can turn to them and say, hey, John, could you grab that call for me real quick? Sure, now John can answer the phone and he can treat the phone guest as though they're the most important person in the world. So you can stay focused on the person in front of you. Now, we're gonna have a little bit of a V, uh, choose your own adventure path here. And I'm gonna talk for a minute about if there's someone standing in front of you and if there's no one standing in front of you. First, we're gonna go to no one standing in front of you. There's no guests around and that phone rings. Just stop what you're doing for a moment and it takes one second to just clear your head and say, okay, I'm picking up the phone to see what I can do for this guest. You got a hundred other things on your list, fires to put out in housekeeping, somebody no, no call, no show that morning. You gotta let all that go and just for a moment, get serious about who's on the other end of that line. And that means taking a second to just kind of smile and say, what a crazy world we live in and answer the phone. Thank you for calling the Hotel Ojibwe. This is Charlie. What can I do for you today? Now, you don't have to use that exact line. You can make up your own. Be you. We want you to be you. We want you to have a different personality than mine and Josh's and your managers. Be you, but be genuine. Be authentic and be cheerful and be excited about the opportunity to serve this guest. We are going to be sticklers about this. There's, we will not allow uh, folks to answer the phone in Hotel Ojibwe. Can I do for you? That's not us. It's not who we are. We legitimately love people. And we get excited when people call us or walk in the room to see us. And you're going to see that for the check-in process too. We want to see enthusiasm and we want to hear enthusiasm in your voice. So when that phone rings, thank you for calling the Hotel Ojibwe. Mean it. Don't just say it because it's a script. People can sense the ingenuine from 3,000 miles away. Be thankful that they're calling. They're the reason that we're doing what we're doing. Thank you for calling the Hotel Ojibwe. My name's Charlie. How can I help you today? excitement, enthusiasm, authentic, and then take care of them. 
whatever it is they need, take care of them. Be you, be authentic, be cheerful, be genuine, be enthusiastic. That's what it looks like on the phone. Now, if someone's standing in front of you, a guest is standing in front of you and the phone rings, we want you to ask that guest, hi, they're standing there so you don't need to say hi. You can say, can you excuse me for just one moment? Thanks, I just need to grab this call real quick. Hi, thank you for calling the Hotel Ojibwe. This is Charlie. How can I help you today? And we want you to say, how can I help you today? Don't say, can I please put you on hold and hang up on them when you don't know why they're calling. Almost half the time, it's a call that you can either answer a question or transfer them to someone else so that now they're not sitting on hold for three minutes while you finish checking in the guest standing in front of you. So find out why they're calling. Hi, this is Charlie, how can I help you? I'm just wondering if your pool's open today. You bet it is, they say. And then if they get long-winded, I'm gonna have to put you on hold or I can take down your number and call you back in a few minutes. One of the big things we're gonna ask you guys to do is if you do have to put someone on hold, maybe they wanna make a reservation, just ask them for their phone number and first name and call them right back. I'll call you back in four minutes. I just need to finish checking someone in and I wanna give them my full attention and you my full attention. Oh, it's Roberta, 999-444-1671. You can hang up with Roberta and now you can be focused again on the guest standing in front of you. So, really, really important, enthusiastic, cheerful, genuine, and take care of their needs. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the in-person side of guest service. When someone walks into our hotel, they're usually coming into the lobby. If you see someone coming to the door, get ready to greet them as soon as that door opens and they're one full step inside. Do not, please, do not wait until they're within the five foot or 10 foot bubble, whatever that ridiculous rule was. If someone walks in the door, we greet them. Because why? Because we're actually excited to see people and to see if there's something we can do for them. Someone walks in our door, hi, welcome to the Hotel Ojibwe. Hi, welcome to the Cedar. Hi, welcome to the Mead. What can I do for you today? When someone walks in the door, please don't say checking in. If it's after three o'clock, there's a really good chance they're checking in, right? I mean, come on, we know they're probably checking in. Don't ask that question. First of all, it's not an impressive question to ask from a service standpoint. Checking in, terrible. Look up at them. Hi, welcome. What can I do for you today? Checking in. Well, of course you're checking in, but we didn't ask. We asked, how are you doing today? If they respond with checking in, fine. But if they don't and they say, I'm doing really well, thanks for asking, or I had a really tough drive to get here, then you can have a conversation with them. But please, please do not say checking in or last name and credit card. I just came back from a trip, so you know some of these things are a little bit fresh for me. But I actually counted at one property. We got to the property, and when I walked up to the desk, the lady was working on something, and she just looked up with this completely unimpressed face. And I said, hey, because I feel like you know I'm excited to be there. Hey, how's it going? I'm here to check in last name and credit card so our id and credit card that's what id and credit card so i hand them to her and i counted and i think i got through the check-in process and she said about seven words that's horrific we're we're not doing that you guys don't want to do it we're not going to put up with it so that's not us we are here because we legitimately like people if you don't like people don't work at the front desk it's that simple and if you don't like people, but you wanna force yourself to like people, we'll help you do that. We'll help you develop the tools to be really excited when someone walks in your door. You don't have to feel that way the first day you start down this path. 
But if you're willing to change and develop the tools and the way of thinking that we're going to describe to you, then maybe a year from now, you might be shocked at the personality that's developed in you because personalities can change. All right. So one of the things we're also going to ask you guys to start doing, especially when it's slow, if it's crazy busy in the summer and it doesn't happen, we're not going to beat you up over it. But if someone comes and checks in and you got five to 15 to 25 rooms and that's all and you're not super busy, once they get to that room, give them about five minutes and give them a call down there and just say, hey, how's it going? Is everything in your room okay? Is there anything I can get for you? And just check in on them. Again, this is not just because of a routine. It's not a checklist. This is because it's in the first five minutes of a guest arriving in a room that most of the problems that they find in that room occur. Once they're in there and settled in, it's really easy. It's in that first five minutes that they're gonna find that there was food left in the refrigerator or that someone didn't correctly bundle the shower curtain or that there was a washcloth left beside the tub or whatever the case may be. And in that first five minutes, if you call and say, hi, I just wanna check and see if everything's okay with the room, and they had a problem and you can resolve it in that first five minutes, you've taken a guest who was gonna be angry from the beginning of their stay till checkout and you've corrected it and made them happy again within that first five minutes. We have a lot of these things because we don't want you guys stuck dealing with that angry guest a day or two days after they had that first initial impression that was negative. So we're, we put these little things in there, these little check-in phone calls, because it allows you the opportunity to fix something immediately and then let that person be happy for the rest of their stay. They're a lot nicer to deal with when they're checking out happy than if they're checking out angry and looking for money back. Let's talk about the checkouts. We want people to come down and see us at the desk. Why? Gluttons for punishment. No, because again, we like people and we wanna make sure they had a great time staying with us. These are extensions of our homes in some ways. We genuine be genuinely believe in providing hospitality. We think of it in the European sense. It's an honor to us that someone chose to stay with us when they have all of these other options and we truly mean that. So when they come down and they go to check out, we ask them, how was everything with your stay? Because we truly wanna know. We're not afraid of hearing bad news. We're not, we're not afraid of bad news. We know that things happen. We know that problems are occur gonna occur. We're not afraid of bad news. We're asking because we genuinely wanna know because we want them to come back the next time they come to our town. So as they check out, Ask them, how was everything? And don't be afraid of what they're gonna say, okay? When they tell you something negative, it's okay. You don't have to defend us. You don't have to defend the hotel. The best way to take care of it is own it. Apologize for it. Let the buck stop with you. Now, this is where we're gonna get into problem solving and reputation protecting, okay? All in the same thing, we're gonna talk about it. So when someone comes to you and they have a problem or they're giving you negative feedback, they get to the room, you make that little phone call after check-in and you find out the TV's not working. Oh, I'm really sorry, give me one minute, I'll be right down there. Solve the problem. You as a front desk associate are given complete authority to solve any problem that someone comes up against when they stay in our hotel. TV's broken, let me get on that. I'll be right down there. Get down there, fix the TV, get back to the desk. If you don't know how to fix the TV when you're watching this right now and you're like, I don't know how to fix TVs, learn, find out. Ask someone in maintenance, hey, can you show me how to reprogram a TV? Hey, can you show me how to fix this when this comes up? Because you get to be the problem solver. You are the solution for this guest's issues. And that enables you to correct, fix, and satisfy the guest in every situation that should come up. You don't have to tell them, well, I'll call the maintenance guy, and when he gets here at 6.30 tomorrow morning, he'll come knocking on your door and wake you up to fix your TV. Nobody's happy with that. Solve the problem. We give 
you guys authority to solve the problem. What is the problem? Doesn't matter, could be anything. It could be that someone called and wants to book some rooms for a group. Quote the rooms. You've got your group rate guidelines. You can quote them rates on the phone. You don't need to ask anyone. You don't need to talk to anyone. All you need to do is see if the rooms are available. And if they are, you start quoting rates because we trust you. We believe you can do it. We believe you're a thinker and we hired you or kept you because you're a thoughtful person and you can find solutions for problems. So we're giving you the authority to do that. Rate negotiation for contractors or corporate folks, negotiate. You've got, again, you've got a guideline there that shows you here's the range that you can negotiate. Go ahead, get them in, take care of them so that we can provide service to these guys for years to come. And be a thinker. If someone comes in and they're like, hey, we've got a big group project coming in the next three months, we're looking for a few rooms. Think to yourself, okay, I, gotta, I wanna get these guys because this is more than just one guest for one night. This could be five guests for 45 nights. So now you start thinking, sure, what can I do for you today? Let me get you some rooms today and then let me go do a little bit of digging. I might be able to get you a rate for the whole duration of the project. Let me, let me bounce it around with a couple other people. You can go and talk to a manager. You can talk to one of us. You can talk to our sales folks and you can come up with a solution so that when you call that contractor back and say, hey Joe, we talked on the phone about 20 minutes ago and I set you up for some rooms next week. Well, I got something for you that I can put on, put, put right in front of you and it'll take care of you guys for the whole project. We'd love to have you stay with us. Be a thinker. Don't turn this into a routine where someone calls and they wanna book a room and they tell you something like, hey, I'm coming in for a project and you go, cool, how many nights? Right, get excited. Oh, cool, what are you working on? Oh, wow, do you guys have a lot of guys coming in? Who's coming in with you? Let me see what I can set you up with. Be a thinker. Think, solve problems, think proactively, and take action. Okay, protecting the reputation when problems arise. If someone has an issue, apologize for it, own it. Okay, you don't have to blame anybody else. We've had this happen often, and it happens often in hotels, especially in the summertime. We get busy. Our housekeeping team is slammed and someone comes down and they go, hey, I found food in my fridge. Or you call up and they answer the phone and they say, I found some food in my fridge. We've had this happen and I don't ever want to hear about it happening again. I'm sorry, our housekeepers have really been struggling. Oh, now this guest is going to be looking at everything for the rest of their stay saying, oh my goodness, I don't even know if they were in my room. I don't know, housekeep, okay, so stop. We don't blame anyone else. We own it and we solve it. We don't have to blame anyone else. There's no need to blame anyone. There's a life lesson to be learned in this as well, and I'll let you do the extrapolation on that, but just for a minute, think about if you stopped looking to blame in your job and just heard about problems and found a solution. Life gets so much more simple when we stop needing to blame or finding someone to blame and we just find solutions and then execute. So own it. I found some stuff in the garbage. It doesn't look like the garbage was changed before we checked in. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Let me take care of that for you. I'll be there in 20 seconds. Whew. The buck stops with you, okay? If you call and someone has a problem when you, on the other end of that line, or if someone comes to you with a problem and you're down at the desk, be the solution to the problem every time it's possible, okay? If it's not possible, which might be 2% of the time, I understand, but be that solution. If someone brings a problem to you, you own it and the buck stops with you, so you take care of it. We don't blame anyone else. We don't talk negatively about anyone else on our team ever to a guest or to a colleague for that matter. And we go and we take care of their problem. That's how we do what we do. If someone has an issue in the room, don't tell them, well, let me call a housekeeper to run down and fix it. Don't do that. 
Don't do it. Just own it. Fix it. Okay? And you don't have to throw a housekeeper under the bus when you get down to the room. You just take care of it. I'm really sorry about this. Let me take care of it. Here, I brought you a few chocolates or I brought the kids a little bag of candy. I'm really sorry about this again. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you and you're gone. That's how we do what we do. Own it. Buck stops with you. We don't throw anyone else under the bus or talk negatively about anyone else. And we solve the problem with a good solution and we leave them feeling happy and like they can call you if anything else comes up and you're gonna take care of it. That is the epitome of how the front desk associate functions. Anything that arises from a guest perspective, you take care of. I'm gonna talk about this from a philosophical standpoint for just a minute. We want you guys to do great work while you're working. And we want that for our managers too. We expect everyone that they're gonna do a great job and that's why we're all working together. We all wanna work hard, we all wanna produce great results and we want, and those results are taking great care of people. And that includes each other. So what that means is when our managers go home at the end of the day and you're on the clock and something comes up, we don't want you t texting or calling a manager saying, hey, someone found a dirty towel in their bed when they got there. So what? Take care of it, leave a note, and the manager might know about it in the morning. And you know what else? You don't maybe have to leave a note. If you took care of it and that guest was satisfied, maybe that's all that we need. And that manager never needs to know. Okay? So we want a team and we want associates who can solve problems and who can give and respect some boundaries in their managers. Our managers are the ones who answer the call when someone calls off and no one else can fill in. They're the ones who are driving in to cover that night audit shift because no one else would do it. When you're there, we want them to be home. If they have a family or if they're spending time by themselves, it doesn't matter to us. We are going to respect their boundaries. And we do that best by solving problems that are brought to us and not dragging them into things that we really don't need to. You're smart. You're thoughtful. You're here because you're a thinker. We trust you to think, come up with solutions, and put those solutions in place yourself. All of this, while it sounds kind of intense because we're solving problems and we're trying to figure out what to do, is said in the context of service. As a guest, the worst thing you can tell me is that you got to check with a manager before solving my problem. As a guest, the second worst thing you can do is tell me that you have to call someone else to go solve my problem because you're not willing to do it. You might say I can't do that, but what I hear is that you're just not willing, I'm not worth your time. And that's frustrating, that doesn't make me feel valued as a guest. Our way for valuing guests is by taking care of their stuff for them immediately. All right, so we're getting into this pretty deep right now and it's great. So. What I want to uh, kind of conclude the service portion with is that we, we want you guys, as you're engaging and talking with guests, to be interested in what they have to say and be more curious about them than you're excited to talk about yourself. Let me say that again. We want you to be interested in them and more curious to learn about them then you are excited to talk about yourself. There's this thing in all of us that we want to talk about ourselves. We like talking about ourselves. And we are asking you guys to set that aside, at least when you're on the clock. And we are going to ask you to become great question askers. Guests call, ask them questions. What are you doing here? What brings you to town? What's the nature of your business? But be curious. Now, there's a lot we can do with that information, but, but be curious and interested in them. If you get someone talking about their, themselves, they're going to love coming and staying at our property. And so that is what we're gonna ask you guys to do. When a guest comes in and they tell you about a waterfall that they're gonna go see, we don't necessarily want you to go on a five minute monologue about the one time you visited one waterfall. 
Ask them, are they visiting any other wall, uh, waterfalls? Do they know how to get there? You can chime in there. Oh yeah, I visited that before. My cousin lives just down the road. It's really cool. Do you know how to get there? Do you have a map? Are you visiting anywhere else? But always bring it back to asking a question of them at the end. Because that's going to allow us to meet the needs of guests. Because now we're asking questions that reveal information that help us know how to meet a need before they might even ask us to fulfill it. That's what we are about. Ask questions, find things out about them, and then do cool stuff for them. Some of our hotels allow us the privilege of being able to find out what guests are about and then sneak a cool little thing in their room that fits in with the nature of their visit. They're coming to go to the golf course. Well, run downstairs at the Mead and grab some of our cool golf stuff that we got from some of our golf partners and stick it in their room. And people love that stuff. Hey, heard you were going to play at this course. Here's a little thing from the ownership that developed it. It's a really neat book. Thought you might enjoy reading it while you're staying with us. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. John, sign your name. Give them a personal contact and provide something to them that fits in with the nature of their visit and meets a need or a desire of theirs before they've even asked for it. That's really, really cool. If we're trying to guess and meet desires for people and we don't know what their hopes are for their visit or their needs are for their visit, we're gonna do some really silly things. We're gonna put celebratory notes in a room of someone who's there mourning for a funeral because we guessed and we didn't ask. We like to ask so that we don't have to guess. So ask a lot of questions, get to know your folks, and it really enriches your life as a front desk associate because it's gonna allow you to get to know these folks at a level that goes just beyond check in and check out. And that's where we wanna do life. We wanna do life at that level where we start to know folks and feel like we're friends because then we can impact their lives in a way that you can't do if all you're doing is checking someone in and out. All right, so lastly, we're gonna hit on operations and you guys at the front desk being the hub of communication, the motherboard of communication. Most guest related information comes to you guys and you have to distribute it. So a lot of the communication that comes isn't necessarily problem related, it's just FYI related. Hey, 516 just checked out. Hey, 102 just checked out. Hey, 104, they've got a dog. So as information comes to you guys, you're kind of the motherboard, right, of information that has to go outward from you to all of our other team members so they're not in the dark. We don't want a housekeeper going and knocking on a door where there's a Doberman hanging out in there. That doesn't feel nice. Let people know, hey, 103 has a dog in there, so if you're doing a stayover, we got to call the guest and make sure that dog's kenneled before you go in to do your thing. Oh, thanks, that makes me feel much, much safer in my job knowing that you're looking out for me. So you guys get all the information. It's really important that you distribute it. Now, I recognize you get really, really busy during really, really busy times. There's some times that it's slow and you could hand deliver notes, right? That's the nature of our business. But when you're busy, it's the easiest time for communication to start to lag and that's the worst time for it to happen. The busier we are, the more important it is that communication is getting out to the right channels. That information is coming in and we're getting it out to the right channels. So sometimes, and we recommend this for all of our folks, uh, managers, front desk associates, housekeepers, keep a small notebook with you on your person that you can pull out at a moment's notice. So if you've got phones ringing, guests scattered in front of you, you're surrounded by managers or housekeepers or you know, pesky people, doesn't matter, you're still smiling, that phone rings, and suddenly a guest tells you something that's really, really important for our maintenance guy to find out. Because that guest said, hey, I think there's a leak in your bathroom, or hey, the sauna is ice cold, or pull that notebook out and jot down a note and set it right on your keyboard in front of you or on your phone. So the next time you go to check someone in or you go to make a reservation, bang, that keyboard is, or that note on the keyboard is staring you in the face. Call Johnny the maintenance guy and have him get to 501. Okay, we recognize that not always can you deliver a message immediately. That's always the best, but if you can't, 
The second best is make a note and put it so you can't miss it. If you don't like the notebook idea, the other thing we'll ask you to do is take a little uh, packet of sticky notes, sticky tabs. I've worked with some people that have been extremely successful throughout their day. They would just fill their computer screen or the little ridge at the top of the front desk with sticky notes and they would not go home until every one of those sticky notes was taken care of or resolved. I love that. It's brilliant. It's right in your face and it kind of gives you just a little ch checklist throughout the day. So if you don't like the notebook idea, I'm a notebook guy and I like crossing things off my notebook. But if you don't, use these sticky notes right across the front of your desk or across your computer screen or on your keyboard. But make sure everything is taken care of before you walk out the door. You should never leave and have notes still remaining that need to be communicated. Okay, the last thing as the hub, the motherboard of communication for the property, be happy. Okay, our housekeepers are out there sweating. Our laundry team, some of our laundry rooms are small, some of them don't have windows, some of them are tough to be in. They're hot, they're sweating, okay? If you're communicating with one of these folks, housekeepers, laundry, breakfast, they're sweaty, they've been running for four hours, whatever, you guys be happy, especially if you're going in to ask them to do something. If you go to a laundry person and you're asking, hey, the housekeeping needs some stuff up on the fourth floor, fourth floor west, and that laundry person just looks at you. If you go in there, hey, they need something up on four west, let's go. That's not how we treat people. Be happy, ask, always ask, if you, especially if you need someone to do something. Hey, would you please run some sheets up to four west? You know what, Never mind. You're swamped. Let me take care of that for you. Can you just get me some kings and I'll run them up there for you? Be a team player too. So be happy. Treat people with tremendous respect if you're asking them to do something. Be cheerful in it. So happy and cheerful. And if you can take care of it for them, take care of it for them. It's really, really important to us. So this has been a bit of a nutshell for you folks at the front desk. You're gonna have a lot of questions, but what this is intended to do is lay a groundwork so that you understand the nature of your position. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go through the four main points, the four main functions of a front desk associate. Provide the best service in your town. Make people feel like they're the most important person that's ever walked in your door. Two. Be thinkers, be problem solvers. Let the buck stop with you. Take care of the problem and bring it to resolution so that our guests can leave knowing that you care about them because you took care of their problem for them immediately. Three, protect the reputation by not blaming anyone. Don't throw anyone under the bus. You don't have to do that. We're bigger than that. We can apologize, we can solve, and we can ask if there's anything else. We don't need to blame. If we remove blaming from our language in the workplace, it's amazing how many problems just disappear. It's amazing the drama that is eliminated and killed. And lastly, number four, you are the hub, the motherboard of communication. So as you communicate between departments and guests, always be cheerful, always be respectful, and always view yourself as part of a team. Because you are, you're an important part of this team, a very important part of this team, but so is everyone else in every other position. So we are all part of a team, we all have different functions and recognize that when someone else is overloaded and you're not, please step in, help them out, do your best to let them know that you care about your other associates, your colleagues, and that you see them as just as important as you. That really goes a long way for those of you working at the front desk and helping us build an environment that, sh that shows everyone how much we care about them. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. There'll be more videos coming out later this week. So leaders, Please distribute this to your front desk associates or watch it yourself and take them through your own training, but make sure you cover these same topics. And if you need my notes because you want to do it yourself, let me know and I can put them into a document and send them out to you in an email. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye.